Introducing 100 Days of Code with Treehouse. What is 100 Days of Code? It's a long-standing coding challenge created by Alex Callaway, and it's simple. Commit to learning every day for 100 days. The amount that you learn in that short time frame will change your life. Whether you want to level up your skills or jumpstart a new career, commit to the challenge. You'll be shocked by how much you learn and accomplish. You'll have the full support of the Treehouse community of students working with you. We'll be sending you motivational emails, clips from our 100 Days of Code podcast, featuring advice, tips and tricks from developers, and so much more. There's never been a better time to commit to your learning. Join us. Hello, everybody. My name is Jonathan. I'm a full stack web developer and instructor here at Treehouse. Um, yeah, so this is part two of data science, uh, Python for data analysis. And let me get you caught up on everything that we did in part one. Okay, let me give you a little screen real estate here. All right, so let's go back to the very beginning. In part one, we imported pandas and numpy, and we used uh, pd and np respectively, so that we don't have to type out pandas. And here's an example of that. And this is the documentation for numpy.random.randint, and we're using np.random.randint. And if you wanna learn more about that, click on that link, and it'll talk about this function and the parameters that go inside. In this case, it's numbers from one to 100, and we want 100 of those numbers. And here are all of our numbers. Uh, before we move forward, I just wanted to mention that we're also doing a live QA, and Karen is monitoring questions for us. So go ahead and ask a question, and that'll get passed to me as I'm presenting this, uh, this live stream, and we'll answer questions. So the questions can be anything that we're talking about now, or things that you would like to see in the next upcoming live streams. All right. So moving on, in order to return that data, what we did here is that we assigned this data variable to Linspace. So all you have to do is, and again, I mentioned this last week, is shift enter, and that'll give you those numbers. Okay, and moving forward. So we wanted to round those numbers off, and we already round those numbers off here, and that's why I just changed that. I shouldn't have ran that. Um, so that's how, um, this is another interesting thing about uh, Jupyter Notebooks, right? Um, it's worth noting that Jupyter Notebooks is different than a Python script that, that you would write as a, in web development, for example, because in web development, you're writing something that is a script that's going to run and grab dependencies or, or in code that you've included in that file, whereas uh, Jupyter Notebooks runs individual scripts in something called cells. So each cell, um, I can point that out here. So return data that I, the data that I just returned that's now uh, rounded off, that was not affected, um, that just ran inside of this cell. And so you have to think a little bit differently when you're processing uh, Python inside of Jupyter Notebooks versus a script. But it's kind of intuitive, but I did think that it was important. So I just wanted to point that out. So let's continue. Let me give you back some of the screen real estate. Okay, so where were we? So we wrangled that data and we got, um, and the way we did that is that we, we took our lint space, which is this number, which are floating point numbers from one to five and 25 of them. So here we have 25 floating point numbers and we're taking, the, um, we're wrapping that around basically this around function. And again, we didn't use numpy here because we imported numpy as mp. And when we return this data, you'll see that we have a one decimal place. And that's denoted by this parameter right here. If you can see that, I just highlighted that. Now, if I change this to two and I run this again, then you'll have two, uh, two in decimal places. So if I change this back to one, we're back to one. So that's a little bit about what that is. And moving on with pandas, what is pandas? Basically a uh, data analysis tool built on top of Python what is a panda series? And basically, in this live stream, we're comparing a Excel sheet 
to a series and data frames. So in this case, a, a series is a, it's a single column in an Excel sheet. Then we made one by simply assigning the variable series to, and we didn't use pandas here because we imported pandas PD. So we, we're using the series and passing in data. What is data? Data are these numbers right here, our test data. So when we pass that in, we get this series. And again, it starts with a zero. It's a zero based index. So if we wanted to change that to a one, change the index to one, you would basically add that, right? So what that means is if you added a one from zero to 24, that would fix the problem. And the way to do that is to take this index. And that's how you um, sort of point to that index and you just add one. And that will give you this series here with a starting on one. And then we're, we talked about mean. Uh, a mean is the average of numbers, but you don't have to do any math. You can just use this function. And so um, returning the mean was three. I believe it's 13 right here. Yep. And another way to access series, you can access them by index. So number 13, we can pull that one out. And if you look at 13, it's 3.0. OK, and then we we said, hey, uh, if they're really one dimensional, what's the shape? And you can use the dot shape um, function to list this. And what does it say here? Basically, it's one column of 25 entries. And it's one column because there's nothing here. Uh, if there was multiple columns, they would give you what's in that column. And then we talked about data frames. And uh, basically, so I'm just going to keep this short. The, the long answer is a two-dimensional size mutable. Let me turn on the camera here. This is so that I can talk to you. All right. So the long answer is uh, a two-dimensional size mutable, potentially heterogeneous tabular data structure with labeled axes. The short answer is rows and columns. So thinking again to uh, uh, Excel sheet, right? Like, you know, spreadsheets. Okay, so let's, let's move on, give you some screen real estate back. All right, so where were we? Okay, so the way that you invoke or create a data frame is this is the data frame, and instead of using pandas, we use PD. And in this case, we're using a very short variable name DF. And what are we passing into the data frame? We're passing in data and a column value so that it looks better, so it's more uh, human readable. So when you return this, you have ratings at the top. And as you see, it's starting at zero. So we can actually end that index. And we're back to one. So if you want to know, uh, if you want to check out this code, it's on in the repo here at github.com slash Jonathan dash Barrios. And you'll see if we went to my name, you can just see that I have them highlighted. It's python dash data dash analysis. And so what you'll see here is basically what we're covering and uh, have the, you'd have to click on the Jupyter Notebook here. And everything we're talking about is here. So all of the answers. And then when you get to part two, it's going to be blank. Yep. So just a bunch of comments. And that's where we are now. Okay. So let's jump back to where we were and continue with part two. All right. If you have any questions about the differences between virtual environments and package managers, um, please ask questions. I got some really great feedback from the live, last live stream, and I answered those questions individually. But I did want to point out that if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those in the live Q&A right now, live. So if you have a question, go ahead and ask, and we'll get you uh, settled. Moving back to uh, Jupyter Notebooks, I'm going to give you some more screen real estate. Okay, so let's check the type of a data frame. So this is pretty easy. We're going to use the short df um, variable, which is up here, right? So this is how we created our data frame. There it is. Okay, so we created our data frame and assigned it to df, a very short variable. And where are we here? Okay, so to find out the type, you just use type and then add that inside of the quotation marks, excuse me, parentheses, pass it in. 
and this is what you get. It tells you what it is, and you can see here that we have a pandas data frame. If we had a series, you would get something different, and we're going to try that in a minute. Okay, so moving on, extracting uh, data from a data frame using iLock with indices 2, 3, and 8. Okay, let's check that out. But bef before we move forward, um, here's some links if you want to check out the differences between lock and iLock. Um, so let's go ahead and extract the data. So let's give it a um, variable name, MIDI data frame, and we will use DF because uh, that's the name of the data frame, and then iLock. And then inside of iLock, we want to pass it an array. And that array is two, going to contain two, three, and eight. Okay, to return this mini data frame, all you do is just type that in here. And then you have iLock accessing uh, indices 2, 3, and 8 and giving them, returning them as a mini data frame, which is pretty cool. So let's continue with this. Uh, we can use index syntax. Um, and you might be familiar with this. And the way that we do this, let me get this sorted out. And we'll use the same variable name here. Okay, so we're going to make this uh, df iloc, and then we're just going instead of passing in an array, we can actually set use colon six, meaning everything up till number six. You might be familiar with that. Um, if not, you know, brush up on. Definitely recommend uh, Treehouse's course on Python to brush up on your Python skills. Okay, so let's return that new uh, mini data frame. And this is what we get. So we get everything up until six. And so that's, that's more familiar, I would imagine, <laughs> than using iLock. But if you notice, there's really not that much of a change. It's not that big of a deal. It's, they're pretty similar. So now that you know the difference, and be sure to read these two links right here to learn more about the iLock and lock functions. Okay, so let's review um, the types of data frames versus series. Series will have one column. Let me turn this back on. A series will have one column, while data frames will have rows and columns. So it's a pretty simple idea, but let's go ahead and, and explore these together. All right, so we want to check um, the type. for the mini data frame, okay? And it's a pandas data frame. And next, we're gonna check the type for the mini series. So what does this mean? So we're only gonna give it one item. And that's basically the answer. So let's try that. And then what we want to do here is I'm going to just pass it right away. So I'm going to say type and then mini data frame. Okay, so we have a, a data frame. So passing in one, let me see, we're trying to do I get it. Okay. So mini series is what I'm supposed to pass in here. Okay, so that's what I was trying to do. So we're trying to compare. Let me turn the camera back on. So what we're doing here is we're comparing what the difference is between a series and a data frame. So you know that these both started out as data frames and we are passing in one. So if you have one row, it's a series. And if you have rows and columns, it's a data frame. And so that's basically what I'm trying to get at with this example. 
And we're going to move on with mean, medium, describe, and more. So let's get the screen real estate back to you, and let's keep going. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those. All right, so mean, median, describe, and we have min and max. So let's see if, uh, I think basically I didn't add those here because we might not have time to get to those today, but we'll do these three. And if you want to check out the, the uh, documentation for this or more information, I have the links there, so just click on those. All right, so let's see. So the return the mean is pretty straightforward. Let's do that first. So our data frame that we're working with is df up here. Is that correct? All the way up here. There we go. So let's see if we still have access to that. And so df Okay, so it calculated um, the mean, and it's a floating point number. Okay, so that's great. So that's the average of that um, series, or data frame in this case. So now let's do the same process, but we're going to actually hand it, uh, we're going to do the median instead of mean. Very similar process. And again, we have the same information. We have three, and it's a float. And describe is kind of cool. Um, it gives you a lot of information. And this is really the, the power of, you know, of using pandas and, and Jupyter notebooks. And um, so let's just check that out. All right, so we don't have to pass anything in to this uh, because we are adding data frame in the beginning using the dot notation. And this shows us a lot of information right off the bat, right? So we have the, the max, min, median, and we have more information there. Um, the count, the size, right? So this is really descriptive and it, and it carries a, a ratings at the top because um, we that's the uh, we added that column value so that it was more descriptive. So that with describe really gives you a great picture of your data very, very quickly, which is pretty exciting. All right. All right, this is pretty cool. So, um, so let's go back and grab the test data from before. And we're just gonna go ahead and just write that out again. Let's see, all right. So it's, it was, I think I believe, test data. And we're going to use NumPy as MP, right? And to return that data, all we have to do is test data. And we want to specify what we want. So we want one through, let's say, 100. And we'll do 25 of those numbers. And so the way that we got return that data is just by entering that variable and shift enter. OK, so here's our numbers. And let's see what we can do with this and turn it into a uh, multi-dimensional array. Okay, this is cool. All right. Um, okay, so where's my, there it is, okay. So we're going to use, so let's do test data again for our variable and we're gonna use NumPy as MP. Rant, um, we're going to, yeah, so basically, yeah, so let's just do this. And we're going to reshape that. So let's do 1, 2, 80, and 25 of those numbers. And we're going to reshape it using this function. And we're going to create a 5 by 5 multi-dimensional array. 
And the way that we return that is test underscore data. And that looks good. So let's go over this. So the test data is our variable underscore data and numpy dot random dot, dot rand int. And here are our parameters. We want numbers one through 80 and 25 of them. And we're going to reshape this into a multi-dimensional array, meaning it's going to be five by five and test data will return that data. And that's our multi-dimensional array, which is super cool. Um, let me turn the camera back on. Whoops, wrong one. So um, this is very cool. We haven't done anything with it yet, but now that we're getting to this point, we're, we can start actually working with the data in all kinds of ways, not just doing math operations and using um, logic, but visualization and plotting, which we're going to get to probably today. So maybe not today. Um, time flies. This is a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy um, uh, data, you know, data analysis, data science in general. And, you know, we can get into things like COVID data or now that, you know, we're talking about police brutality data, we can, any kind of data for your community. It's really exciting to use this uh, information for yourself and for others in your community or even to get a job because you know so many different skills and you can help companies and organizations channel that data and turn it into actionable intelligence. So this is really ex exciting stuff. So I think um, let me take a look at where we're at. We have a lot to, lot, of, lot more to cover, so let's call this part three, and then we'll get into the magic starting next week. So these are you know twenty minute, um, sort of bite sized live streams, and it was it's always a pleasure to do these. So okay, so last call for questions. If you have any questions for today's live stream or for what you'd like to see in the next live stream, go ahead and ask a question. And if it's too late and you missed the live stream for today, no sweat. Uh, you can reach out at on Twitter and find me at underscore Jonathan underscore codes. Um, well, I hope everybody's well and hang in there. Um, we'll all get through this and I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. I sure did. And as always, happy coding.